So if you folks that don't know, this was Bernie's favorite Friday song. I, you go back to the movie Saturday Night Fever with John Travolta, and he'd be blowing his hair and getting ready and screaming Attica with the Bee Gees. And this was a song for Bernard. Every Friday we played this, and he got all pumped up for his big weekend, which he did nothing, by the way, but drink a Forster's lager and sit on his uh, porch back there and um, watch, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, fights or something. MMA. But, uh, MMA, right? But this got him all pumped up. Folks, this is uh, today throughout the program. We are raising money. Me and my beautiful wife, Danielle, she just left for the uh, DCD, Dyspraxia, the Spotlight Foundation for Dyspraxia DCD. You can donate right now. Go to the website, wabcradio.com, and you'll see a button at the very top of the page with all the foundations here. We are the very first one on the scroll down. Once again, Spotlight Foundation for Dyspraxia DCD, raised already close to $14,000. You guys have been very, very generous, including Mr. Katsimatidis. If you can't get to the website for some reason, you can call this. This morning, 1-800-890-9088. That's 1-800-890-9088. But the website, preferable, wabcradio.com. Now, as promised, on this Friday morning, we had that beautiful mass for my guy Bernie just a couple of days ago at St. Patrick's. And we had the chance once again, I haven't seen these folks since the funeral and the cemetery, to see Carol, Bernie's beautiful wife, and his two really great kids. I mean, great kids, Brendan and Melanie. And uh, we promised you that day they'd be back in studio on this Friday. And uh, sure enough, sitting to my left, Bernie's daughter, Melanie, and sitting straight in front of me, Bernie's son, Brendan, the McGurks, and Rosenbergs are back together again. Just the way it should be, right? Absolutely. Right. Nice to have you guys. Nice, nice to, to be, be here. here. Now, when you look to your right, Melanie, and you too, Brendan, and you see that 77 WABC Radio, the Bernard McGurk Studio, Starting with you, Brendan, what does that mean to you? Uh, it's just, it's huge. I know how much this all, the, his job meant to him and, uh, you know, being a straight shooter and talking on the air was, uh, you know, second to his family. It was everything to him. And uh, yeah, it means a lot. It's huge. Pretty cool, right? You yeah. too, Melanie, right? That's pretty Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. I feel like flooded with mixed emotions right now. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in the spot where my dad That's sat every seat. single day. Yeah. And I wish it was him sitting in the seat still, but I, I feel really honored to be here and be sitting in the Bernard McGurk studio. It's really such an honor. It really is. And that is his seat you are sitting in. It so. is. And he and I would be just like this. And Absolutely. He'd say something like, you know, my kid, Brendan, he's taking this test and the test is like five hours long. To, you know, to work for one of these, you know, great accounting firms and become a CPA. And then you got a job with like a really big time firm. And uh, he was running around like you were president of the United States. He was so proud of you. <laughs> you are a practicing CPA right now at another big firm, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Not, not at the same firm you were a couple of years ago. No, I'm not in public accounting anymore. I was at the big four public accounting firm. Right, right. But was, uh, That's right. Now I've moved to a private industry where the work-life balance is a little better. Oh, awesome. So. And you, Melanie, my wife Danielle can talk about this because she deals with people like you all the time. In fact, she's going to court this morning in Nassau County. You are on your way to becoming a court stenographer. Are you there already? You're on the way. Not yet. I am okay. on my way to, to graduating. It's coming soon. Um, I'm at 160 words per minute, and I have to get to 225 <laughs> words per minute, which is a lot, but it's doable, and I'll get there, and I'm excited about well, it. What do you do to practice? you have to keep just hitting keys all day long to practice? Is that what you do? Yeah. Well, it's like it's not a regular keyboard. It's like a specific machine made for this, like... For this, yeah, yeah, and um, it's kind of like learning a different language. Yeah, and I have to sit there and I listen to audio and I write everything that's being said, and that's how I practice. And you have to just go in increments of twenty. So I started at forty words per minute, then sixty words per minute, eighty, so on and so forth, until I get to two hundred twenty-five. Well, very impressive. Yes. Uh, he was always uh, talking so nicely about both of you guys. I'll tell you one quick story about you, Melanie. So um, your father was not huge, as you guys know, with social media. In fact, I think his Facebook picture is still him and Sarah Palin for like 20 years. <laughs> and um, I used to say, Bernie, go on Instagram. Yeah, 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 I can't get it. So one day, I'm on Instagram quite a bit. I come in and go, you know, Bern, your daughter Melanie, she's following me on Instagram. And so I followed her back, you know. I'm like, what are my kids, you know? Great. Oh, good, 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 good. She's on there quite a bit. Good, good, good. About two weeks later, I go, you know, Bern. Your daughter Melanie's wearing a bikini on Instagram. <laughs> and I kind of feel uncomfortable 
being on Instagram, seeing that picture. It's like my own daughter. Like I yell at Ava all the time. Don't trust. Like mm-hmm. I said, so I think I'm going to unfollow your daughter. What should I do? And he's like, oh, no, no, stop, 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 stop. I did unfollow you, just so you know. I because- did notice that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. But not because I don't love you, because I'm like, it just felt kind of weird for me to uh, to be I on Instagram and see you, you know. Absolutely. And, and, and he didn't go on there, your father, Bernie. So I'm the one who had to bear that, uh, yeah. that, that, that picture. Honestly, I feel like if my dad was on Instagram, I would not be posting those things. If either of my parents were, mm. I would just not. <laughs> but you haven't done it in a long time. Well, he was sick this summer, so you didn't do that. But no, yeah. 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 So I remember the exact day he was sitting in that chair, Brendan and, and Melanie. And um, he was grabbing at his groin, you know, which he did it all the time anyway between us. And <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you know, when I go to the bathroom, it, it burns me. And I said, burn, burn. I'm not a doctor. Anybody can tell you, you have a urinary tract infection. You got a UTI. That is the classic symptom. He goes, I don't think so. I said, well, what do you mean you don't think so? He said, I, I don't know, man. I, I think I may. I said, don't say it. He said, I'm not saying it, but I'm going to get checked this week. And then, of course, that was... Um, Probably early December, and then by Christmas, we knew what was going on. And by the New Year's, of course, it started to become a real disaster until we got to where we were in October. But I remember him that specific morning, right where you're sitting, Melanie, telling me, this thing burns, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on. What was you like at home? I'm just curious. It was really tough at home. And, you know, he he still wanted to come in to the station to do the show. Yeah. So, but he was unable to sit and drive. So. Well, that was because of that surgery he had. Well, was it because of the surgery? Yes, because. Maybe they, they, it was. Yeah, because yeah. they actually messed up his, uh, his butt, to be honest. They did. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he was never able to sit from that day on, which is really unfortunate. But so he would have me drive his car in the morning to get to the station. And I would just I sit over in the other studio. Right. Doing my schoolwork. I, I, I got you a couple of uh, bacon and egg you know, did. cheese sandwiches. You absolutely <laughs> did. I love that. But yeah, I would just sit there and do my homework and wait for the show to be over. And then I would drive us home or drive us to a doctor's appointment. Like this past year has just been full of appointments. And like he was so uncomfortable. It was yeah. so sad to watch. Yeah. We could actually hear him, guys, moaning. Because, you know, of course, he was doing it from home. Mm-hmm. And Lewis has the equipment where, you know, Bernie would talk through and be on the show. And during breaks, he'd come on there and be like, eh, uh, Biden's an imbecile and the punk in the pantsuit, Nancy Pelosi, and that, that, that uh, you know, that bimbo Kamala Harris. And then we'd go to break, he'd be like, Carol, and he'd be moaning. It was that bad. I know. Had to be tough for you to watch too, Brendan, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was really tough. It was... Uh... Yeah, I think one of the worst parts was that he couldn't sit. You know, we couldn't even go out to a restaurant or uh, you wow. know, sit outside, you know. Like he had to either be standing up or laying down. Or laying down. And yeah. he couldn't stand for that long either. So he would stand for like 10 minutes and then be like, oh, my gosh, I have to go lay down. I can't uh, even sit, you know. What's hard for me to believe is um, for him specifically because, you know, guys, he would come in every morning. And me, I, you know, I kind of changed my diet, right? So I'd have Phil go get me a bacon, egg, and cheese. And I get bored of that. Then I get like a, a bagel and cream cheese. Your father was so rigid in his diet and ate so healthy. He had the most boring breakfast ever. So the same fiber cereal, a couple of nuts. I'm like, Bernie, don't be afraid to live. Get something. For-. No, no. He worked out. He ate right. So for him, of all people, to go through that and become so uh, vulnerable was really odd because he was the complete opposite of that in his daily habits. Absolutely. You, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, no one could have anticipated this. Like he was healthy. His heart was healthy. Everything about him was healthy. Hmm. He worked out every day. Like his pride and joy was going for a run on the boardwalk, yeah. biking on the boardwalk. And then he would flip days and then he would go to the gym and then he would do the boardwalk. Like that was what he loved to do. And he was so proud of his healthy habits. Yeah, he was in great shape, but he would play one-on-one basketball against you, Brendan. And when he would win, <laughs> let me tell you something, he would come in, it was like LeBron James. He's like, ah, and my son's not going to make this, but I just kicked his ass in basketball. And he posted <laughs> on Facebook pictures of you two going at it one-on-one. That's funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I wasn't the best at basketball. I think <laughs> it might It was not... easy to beat you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't that hard. But I think he, he used to play one of uh, Melanie's boyfriends, and I think that might be what oh, you're thinking of. Oh, my ex-boyfriend, yeah. He, oh, he I used to this play kid. all of them. He, yeah, you did. He was actually he in was the studio. He was like in the air force or something, right? He's, he's in the, the Navy. Navy. There you go. Yeah, yeah so yeah. he's in like special ops. It's really kind of cool. But, you don't talk um, to him anymore? 
No, I do. He was at the funeral. He was at the wake. Oh, he, I don't know who he was. So we're I didn't still, know that. We're still friends. But, definitely. You're, but you're, you're, there's no romance anymore. That's no, over. No, no. Because I really thought for a while there, I know you got married, obviously, Brendan, lovely girl, and you have a child on the way. Right. But my money was on you because you and this guy were like really hot and heavy. It was a five year relationship. It was a long five time. Five years? It was five years. What, did, what happened? Is it his High fault? school through college? No, we just yeah. kind of went our separate ways. And oh. he was going into the Navy, so it was hard to, you know, stay yeah. together through something like that. Right, right. So, but he was here in studio when you guys were over at Penn Plaza yes. um, to meet uh, Rob O'Neill. That's right. He couldn't wait because Rob O'Neill, for folks that don't know, was the man that put a bullet right between the eyes of Osama bin Laden. And your father kept saying, Melanie's boyfriend can't wait to meet this guy. And I did meet him that day. That's right. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. That was awesome. He he loved that. That was great. Did you ever admit to your father, Brendan, that you hate Donald Trump? (laughs) No, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> you could, but if you did, you couldn't even say it. Uh, he would never yeah. disown you, but it would be no. a very miserable existence. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, he he wasn't at home. Uh, he was very easygoing. You know, you could have conversations. He wasn't, uh, it wasn't really. Like, yeah, it wasn't exactly the same as oh, he is come on. on. So you're telling me about Thanksgiving. You're all having Thanksgiving dinner. Mm-hmm. You and Melanie and Carol and Bernard, and you just happen to say, "I got to tell you, I saw Trump on TV today." He really is a moron. Mm-hmm. Your father would be okay with no problem with that? He, uh, yeah. I I mean, he wouldn't get personally offended by anything, you know? He so just, why would you like that with me? <laughs> <laughs> it was entertaining. You that know? that yeah. was the entertainment he yeah. brought to the show, you know? That's the aspect <laughs> you know, he, he And he told me that, kids. He would say, I don't really care at home. I go, there's no way you could be that enthusiastic and fired up here and go home and not care. You're lying to me. No, but he true. wasn't lying to me. No, he that, absolutely he'd wasn't. Have, uh, he'd have fans come up to him sometimes that like would want to start talking politics. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. All right. Well, I'll see you next time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really want to talk about well, it. Well, but to be honest, whether it was politics or not, because I traveled quite a bit with Bernard. Uh, the, the most recently, we went to the Super Bowl together in Atlanta, which was fun. And people would walk, no matter what they wanted to talk about, mm. it didn't matter. He was like, nice to me. Okay, I got to go. I got to go. Like, like Sid, you talk to him. I'm like, oh, really? like man. <laughs> I talked to them. So he wasn't as, as brilliant as he was and the great performer that he was. He was never very comfortable with that. Is that fair to say? I would honestly consider him to be like an extroverted introvert. Yes. That's yes. how I would describe him yeah. because he could put it on when he needed to. But like his happiness was sitting at home, like we said. With a beer, watching UFC fights alone in our basement. Like, that's he what he that. enjoyed, you it. know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of like that about him. I miss that about him. 1-800-848-WABC. 1-800-848-9222. Eric Sugar. He's actually an adult that has this proxy. And I like my son, Gabe, who's only 13. He'll call us live from San Francisco. We're also going to hear later on from another young lady in the UK. She's 23. She's got dyspraxia DCD. So we'll hear from the both of those folks later on in the program. Also, Chris Matthews, former MSNBC star. He's going to stop by Joe Pinion, money against Chuck Schumer. They've got a debate coming up on Sunday night. He's going to stop by, too. But uh, what a beautiful hour this has been. After two great hours with my beautiful wife, Danielle, where we talked about dyspraxia, raised a ton of money. I spoke to John Katzmatidis and a host of others. Now I've got this amazing opportunity to speak to two of my favorite people, Bernie's kids, two great kids, Brendan and Melanie. So welcome back. That was a great 20 minutes. You um at the actual funeral on Long Island, not the mass, which was also a beautiful service. And Mike Breen spoke and Bo Deedle and I spoke and you spoke. And uh, I guess you found a letter that you wrote. Uh, and you'll talk about this. I'm, I may be wrong in my uh, description, but I think you wrote a letter for school to your father about your father. Maybe you were seven or eight years old and you read this at the funeral and it was adorable and heart wrenching at the same time. You handled it well. I didn't. So you brought this letter in today. I did. You mind reading it again? Or? Absolutely. Now, what was the, what was the, ba- the, uh, the backstory behind the back this? The backstory behind this is that my mom and dad were in the city for chemo And I wanted to do something special. So I was cleaning out my dad's closet, just making the room nice and organized. And I found this letter that I wrote in second or third grade. Now, how long ago was this? This He was still alive, obviously. He was coming in with chemo. So how long ago? This was probably in like March or April, I would say. I found a lot of stuff from my childhood, but this one stuck out to me. And when he got back from his chemo treatment, he was laying in his bed and he was in pain and you know, it was really hard to see him like that, but I handed him this letter and 
Oh my God. The, the smile that he had on his face yeah. through all the pain that he was feeling, I could oh. tell this brought him comfort and happiness. And that's something that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. But and you actually not just handed him the letter, but if I'm correct, you read him the letter and then you said uh, for the first time you heard him actually laugh and giggle. And exactly. He laughed and I will say it was hard for him to laugh. There weren't many laughs happening in our house at that time, but he did and he he loved it. Oh, I loved it too. You're not even my daughter. I mean, you're close, but you're almost my daughter. But uh, I loved it too. So go ahead and read it for the folks out there right now, if you don't mind. All righty. Could get emotional, but here we go. It's okay. It says, Dear Daddy, I love you so much. There is no other daddy better than you. I love you so much. And there is no other dad that is as skinny as you. <laughs> and I'm not lying. You are the only person that doesn't have blubber on you. You only have flesh. You are so nice. You buy me really good things and oh. take care of me when I am sick and mommy is away. Oh. You let me call anyone I want to play with when mom is gone. You are the best and I just can't imagine having any dad but you. I love you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Love, Melanie. Hey, what grade was that? I would say second grade. That's better than most New York Times columns today. Just <laughs> <laughs> and that was great. You were great there and great just now. It's adorable. I'm glad you kept that. You, Brendan, you, um, I'm, I know you've got stuff like that too with your father, mm -hmm. but you admitted to me before you came in this morning, came on the air, I should say, that uh, unlike Melanie, who, who did break down and start to cry, but for the most part, at both the mass and the funeral, did a really good job. You don't think you can do that? You thought you were just, you couldn't do it because you'd break down, right? Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't be able to compose myself, uh, you know, like the way she did and, uh, you know, it'd just be really hard to... Um Say that in front of a lot of people. You See, know? and you don't, I, I know her a little more than you because mm -hmm. I've met her a couple of times more. I'm yeah. happy you and I got to see each other a bunch of times now because you're a wonderful kid and you love you. But you don't seem that type. You seem like you, you, you may be kind of tough. Like to make Brendan cry ain't going to be all that easy. Maybe I'm wrong. Is, is that your personality? Well, I guess that's why I avoid those situations. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're yeah. not going to yeah. see it. Ah. <laughs> so, but, but actually I did see you at the funeral in the cemetery. And, and you guys, you and your father were, were very, very close. So when, mm -hmm. when uh, Greg Kelly, for example, says to uh, Melanie a couple of days ago, which uh, of these kids uh, was uh, was your father's favorite? Which uh, was a silly question, but mm -hmm. but kind of cute, I guess. And without hesitation, Melanie said me, and uh, you didn't even you didn't even say a word. Is that because you know that's not the truth, or because you know? Yeah, it probably is the truth. Well, I wasn't going to fight her on it because, you know, <laughs> it's not a good look. You know, right. daddy's little girl. I'm not going right, to. Right, how am right. I going to fight that? Right. True. Right. True. Yeah. You know, I, I wonder if I was asked the same question. I mean, it's because Ava is my older child. You're older, Brendan. You're 29. You're what, 27 27. Now? 27. My daughter's older than my son, and she's in college now in Europe. But my little boy is home. But it's kind of the same thing. Like, I, I discuss different things, obviously, with my daughter than I do with my son. Mm -hmm. What was the last serious conversation, Brendan? Uh, I mean, you're way past the birds and the bees at this point. You're having a child. But mm -hmm. what was the last serious conversation you remember having with your father? Well, you needed his help with something, some advice. Um, well, he would always, I mean, I remember growing up, you know, he always gave uh, a ton of wisdom, you know, like uh, make sure, you know, one of his favorite phrases was delay gratification. And he would always say, you know, make sure you do your homework, make sure you study and you earn the good times. You know, you earn the weekends. You you know, that was the way he was. And so he annoying, that on right? Me. Wasn't it so annoying? <laughs> At times it can be. He would do that with me. I'd be like, Bernard, it's freezing outside. If you don't know pain, you can't enjoy pleasure. I'm like, what? what? But he was right. Yeah. Right? He was right. The late gratification. Was, yeah. mm -hmm. he, I mean, he really was a man. He always did that with the little things, too. Like, if we were ever to get, like, McDonald's or something, we would get, like, a chicken nuggets and french fries. And he's like, you have to eat the chicken nuggets first right. because it's healthier. <laughs> and then you can eat the french fries afterwards. So we always had to eat the healthier healthy thing first yeah. and then go for the good stuff but he right. never ate unhealthy things i swear brendan melanie i used to beg him right Lou, you were here and he just a piece of cake or cookie 
I'm sure if you went to Ronnie's place, maybe on a Saturday night, Christine's, mm-hmm. right? Or what else? He liked that, uh, he that did steak the, place. But he did the inspection, though. Did he inspect your food? Anytime? Yeah, he did that, too. Yes. Because he would come mm-hmm. on. Like, if I got something from the cafeteria, he'd say, like, okay, now, uh, how many greens have you got in it? Like, <laughs> how many? Uh, you, no, you need, no, you, a salad is not, that's not yeah. what the salad should be. He did do right, that. It was true. a dissection of your yeah. food. It was like, and, uh, and I had worked with him for 30 years, and I went, why do you constantly have to drive me crazy about the five minutes of pleasure I get during this show. He, he would do that. That's, That's it. The food. Yeah. Was he the same way at home like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. I, I remember sitting there at the dinner table and before I ate, I had to drink a full glass of orange juice. Mm-hmm. And to this day, I despise oh, wait, orange wait, 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 juice. What do you mean you have to drink? What does he that mean? He forced me you to drink wait a orange second. juice. Now he's starting to sound abusive, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> because it was calcium. It was like the healthy stuff. Yeah. And I, till this day, do not drink orange juice. And then he would make me take my vitamins after eating. And I just remember... You know, being stealth and bringing them upstairs and hiding them and <laughs> see, flushing yeah. them down you the see, toilet. You don't know things. Here we are talking about Bernie. Like he's, he, he turns out he's like mommy dearest. No, he's <laughs> yeah, he's militant. That's he it. was. He really was. He was. And then I remember also another time. He, I'm in the car with my friend, and we were like little kids, and we stop at the gas station, and he goes, "Girls, do you want a snack?" And we're like, "Yeah, absolutely, we want a snack." And he goes in and then comes out with one bag of peanuts and one <laughs> water bottle. That's it. No chips, no goldfish, oh nothing. Uh-huh. Peanuts. Now, was he the same way with you, Brendan? Uh, no, uh, me. Yeah. You know, same yeah. way. No, he was. Yeah. And yeah. he'd make us, uh, he'd be going for runs on the beach. He'd be like, come on, you know, come with me. Let's go. And, you know, we like, never wanted like to. Like he'd like wake you up at six <laughs> o'clock in the morning, right? Oh, Stop no, playing no, no. Six in the morning. So, no, no, never. He wasn't awake until like noon on weekends. Well, he did yeah. say that late. to me. He would always always say to me he couldn't believe that by 10 o'clock in the morning Danielle and I would have already gone to the gym maybe take it a, a class you know don't know he's like sit I don't get up till one o'clock in the afternoon mm-hmm. he would always say that that was true that 100% was true. Yeah. that was yeah. true yeah yeah his, his schedule was kind of weird during the week too in that he would come home from work even before me during the Imus days and he would sleep during the day and then wake up like in the middle of the night and start working on the show right yep. absolutely yeah, yeah. He, he, he would have like two hours of sleep at night that's yeah. it because he always wanted to be up and ready for all the new news that was you know coming on and then he would come home from work and he would sleep for four hours and then he would get up he would go to the gym he would prep and then do it all over again he did that five days a week i'm like how are you like alive you're so sleep deprived two naps a day basically two naps a day exactly that was his sleep right exactly yeah it worked for him Mm -hmm. 1-800-848-WABC 1-800-848-9222 this i'm enjoying immensely oh it's it's a good stuff it's great it confirms how really insane right he was (laughs) he was he was the sweetest as i said in the new york post just two days ago and i meant it the best man i've ever met but a complete psycho. Oh, yeah. It's all true. <laughs> Let's Absolutely. be honest. I mean, a complete nut job. <laughs> Very unique. Mc- <laughs> unique. That's yes. the word. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk more with uh, Brendan and Melanie. They'll be here the whole hour, which is uh, fantastic. Again, folks, if you want to help us today, donate to our Dyspraxia Radiothon, the Spotlight Foundation for Dyspraxia DCD. Please go to the website right now, wabcradio.com. You guys have been so generous, doing a great job today, making Danielle, me, and Gabriel all very happy. You'll uh, click on the button on the homepage, which reads Foundations, and we're the first one that comes down, Spotlight Foundation for Dyspraxia DCD. And of course, if you can't, for some reason, get to the website, you can make a phone call, 1-800-890-9088. That's 800-890-9088 800-890-9088 and donate to this wonderful cause today. Uh, Lewis, I just heard something during the break. Usually when the breaks come, I run out of the studio and just walk around the halls and kind of like Vinny the Chin with his robe in uh, Pennsylvania. But um, I'm so intrigued by both Brendan and Melanie and the beautiful kids and I love them. And the conversation is great off the air and on the air. And uh, Melanie is telling me, this is hard to believe, I'm not even sure if I believe it to be honest, uh, that her and her mother you ready for this, Lewis? I'm, I might not be. Her and her mother, Carol, listening right now. Um, well, I can't even say it. It's not true. It's just not true. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> okay, don't say it. It happened. It happened. It did not happen. It happened. Brendan said it happened. It must have happened. Because if Brendan said it happened, <laughs> mm-hmm. what exactly? You want to tell everybody? Oh, let's make Let's tease it. Something happened. It's hard to believe. <laughs> Knowing Bernard and how we felt about this specific A sport. Oh. <laughs> tell them what happened, Mel. 
No, I was just saying that this past weekend, my mom and I flew down to her best friend's house in Jupiter, and she lives on Trump's national golf course. And uh, she took me to go hit some balls. So I'm, yeah. I'm kind of into golf these days. But Sid was Not really you. taken back by it, you know, <laughs> since my dad absolutely hated, hated the sport it. of golf. Yeah. The, again, I, I told him when Tiger won in 19, he came back and had that amazing dramatic win at the Open. Your father was genuinely excited. And he, he reveled on that Monday morning. The day before, the day after, forget about it. I couldn't even mention golf. And to think that you and Carol are now becoming golf addicts. I mean, <laughs> not like my own, mom. Not your mom. <laughs> no. You have like your own golf clubs? No. But no, you, you, want not, them, you want them. You want I them. I would get them. I really enjoyed it. Wow. It was really cool, but I was so sore the next day. It looks a lot easier than it is. Very hard. I will say that. Very it hard. is very hard. Yeah, I hate it because I always get the same blister on my thumb. Yeah. Then by the ninth hole, I'm bored to death because I've already done the same thing over and over again. I lost 19 balls. Then I got to go to the bathroom. I got to travel like 18 miles. And somebody has the car. I got to walk. It's hot as hell out there. What is the fun of it? What, what is good about it? It's very frustrating. I don't know. I've never done the whole nine hole or 18 hole. All I've done is hit the golf balls. That's as far as I've gone. <laughs> I would like to learn the rest, but we'll see. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Melanie McGurk on the golf. Now, you like to play sports mm. you've only you you say your father-in-law likes golf so you, you yeah. play it once or twice i've played a few games of golf casually yeah, yeah my father-in-law is big into it i've uh, i think it's called rounds I'm, I'm not even sure you may be a game i think it's called rounds of golf so you're not even sure right. how, to, how to say it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I, no i'm definitely no very casually very, very casual casually, yeah you, but you play any other sports i mean you're in good shape right then you do you go to the gym or anything or? i try i do lift weights once in a while yeah you're I, strong i haven't been as much lately, wow. but obviously my dad used to drag me to the gym you right. know, when he I was younger. He made you go. He made you <laughs> yeah. go. And he made you drink orange juice before. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Always. Yeah, no, he instilled, you know, being strong, being healthy, you know. Yeah. So, like, I, you know, I got to get back That's into it. That's stuck with us. And we yeah. have a Peloton at home, so I do the Peloton every day. And... Yeah, we've got it, too. We've got the bike and the treadmill for Daniel. Oh, yeah, we yes. just have the bike. And you do it every day. Every day. Oh, you're both in very good shape. You're beautiful kids, both of you. Both beautiful. So I know, you, you. I know you're saying that. I know it's very important to both of you guys, and especially now. So we were talking also during the break. Um, my radiothon is today. Not mine, but the Spotlight Foundation. My son has dyspraxia. This is really uh, Danielle, her heart, that, that brought this uh, to fruition. And it's important to us. But moving forward, knowing uh, what, um, what took your father's life, not his soul and not his memory, but his life, uh, it would only be right if uh, the three of us uh, did something similar to what I'm doing today for your father. And you, Melanie, and you, Brendan, had a couple of really good ideas moving forward to make sure that Bernie McGurk stays a part of this show forever. And more importantly, continues to help people long after he's gone. Talk about some of those ideas. I think it would be great because my dad was into athletics. He loved running. He loved biking, everything like that. So I think it would be a good idea to try to start something up. Where he could, it's like in, in memoriam of him, a fundraiser for the cancer he had. Yep. If we could do a run or a bike in Long Beach, that. Manhattan, mm -hmm. wherever. I, I just, it. it would be a nice thing to keep his name going. I think it's a great idea. And uh, my wife would want it for sure. She's a marathon runner. Corey Zellner would want it for sure. All of Long Beach would want it. All of Lido Beach would run it. All of Rockaway. Your father was very popular in my neighborhood, too. They loved him over the bridge, right over the bridge. I think you get a ton of people to do that. I think it's a great idea. I agree. I hope it can come to fruition, honestly. But no, no, no. It's going to come to fruition. You know why? Because I'm going to make sure it does. All right. That's all you need to know. I'm going right. to make it happen. Perfect. And uh, you're going to run too, Brendan. How uh, long do you want this uh, run to be? Uh, like a 5K, a 10K? I mean, if I'm going to personally do it, it's got to be like a 5K. I can't be doing like half marathons. Ooh, or This is even better. So now, Melanie, because I think Brendan can do it either way. Now, because you said that, we're going to make it a 10K. Oh, God. That's oh right. God. And you are going to train, and we're going to follow <laughs> the... And you're going to train with her, Brendan. I'll have to, yeah. And the two of you will follow your training. You can do it... Can you do 10K? Six miles. Uh, I mean, I haven't in a long time. Oh, this is going to be great. I so, to you can't do it. So none <laughs> no. of you can do it. So we're going to watch you guys train and get there, and then the day of, you guys are going to complete it, and that's going to make your father really proud. Don't do something easy, mm -hmm. because that's not what Bernard did. Do you know that one time... Uh, kids, we, we actually went to a, an event for Leslie Slender, and we um, it was for 9-11. So the firefighters had to run up and down the stairs at the Twin Towers carrying 70 pounds of equipment. And you know, guys, they went up like uh, hundreds of floors, you know, mm -hmm. uh, hundred floors. 
or 80, whatever it was. So we went to this Saturday morning one time. We had this uh, big event, and they wanted us to run up and down like 56 uh, floors. You know your father did it three times? Really? That was a show off. I do yeah. know that. He did tell me that once. Floors. Three times, Brendan. Wow. Everybody did it once. It came down humping and puffing. He's like, let's do it again. Uh, I'm like, you show off. And he did it. And he never huffed, never puffed. I'm sure, yeah. So we got to make it a little more difficult for you. He always said to me, like, you should always take the stairs. If if yep. if anything, it's a good workout. You won't get stuck in the elevator. He was a big claustrophobic. Yeah. So he's like, just take the stairs. And I remember this one time in college. I was looking at screenshots that I had from my me and my dad's conversations when I was in college. And you, and went to, you went to Cortland. If I'm I correct. went to Cortland, yeah. yes, and I texted him and I said the elevators were broken all weekend, so I've walked up those ten flights so many times. They finally fixed them this morning, and he goes, "Ha! Huh, I'm so proud of you. Had you ever walked up before?" And I was like, "Yeah, like <laughs> once." And he goes, "Do it once a day from now on, or you're grounded, and I'll rent." <laughs> I'll rent your room what? out to a fat homeless guy. Oh my God! <laughs> That's that. that I gotta crazy. tell you, this last hour has shown us a completely wow. different Bernie McGurk. It's refreshing. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh my God! You know, it was, it was like too good to be true. I mean, <laughs> listen, you better. You know, when I first moved to that building in Manhattan on the Upper West Side, I lived on the 14th floor, Brendan and Melanie. And uh, the building is a disaster. They promised to build a sunroof. They never built it. They promised to build the gym. The gym's like the size of this studio. It was a joke, you know? And I paid a lot of money, a lot of money, like Trump would say. And um, the elevator was always broken. So could you imagine I would walk to Gristidi's and buy a whole bunch of stuff. I'd have to walk up and down 14 flights. Up and down 14 flights is 28 flights. And I would come in and complain. Your father, and your father would be like, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a great workout. He wishes he could do it. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, you know what? He was actually jealous. Yeah, I said, sure. I, I thought I was going to die yesterday. I, I'm, I'm carrying Coffee Cake Juniors up 14 <laughs> flights of stairs. He goes, that's great. That's great. That was your father. But then, uh, was, but then he'd say, now a better way to do it is if you <laughs> go up sideways and hold one foot. Yeah. Yeah. Now you head, go backwards. Right. Do it on your head the first seven, then take your feet for the next seven. That's you're, the better way. There's always a better yeah. way. Or if you hop up every two Skip steps. Every other yeah. stair, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's good, but the best way is this. Let me show you. Uh, you know, oh, God. It was amazing. He Teaching was a character. Mind. He Absolutely. was great. We're going to come back and uh, wrap up this uh, really beautiful conversation with Bernie's kids. I know, Carol, you're listening. We love you, too. Bernie, I know you're listening. We love you, too. And uh, your kids are right here with me. Brendan and Melanie, and we'll come back and wrap it up right after this on Talk Radio 77 WABC. Well, this was... Um, I knew it was going to be great. I knew it. Because I know you kids. You're both great, Brendan and, and Melody. And uh, we're going to keep doing this. And all these events that you want to do, Mel and Brendan, your father's memory, we're going to do them all. We'll do a, uh, a radio thon like I'm doing today. We'll do a run every year. We'll do a whole bunch of stuff. And as long as I'm in this studio and I'm doing mornings at WABC, your father will always be a part of the show. I think you both know that, right? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. good. Because that's never going never gonna to change. Um, he's listening right now. So this is the part where it's not all that much fun. It was a great 55 minutes, right, Kate? Yes. Um, he's listening right now, Brendan. What, what do you want to say to your dad? Uh, just, uh, you know, I, I love him forever. Um, you know, he made me the man I am today. And uh, I just want to, you know, pass everything on. He taught me to uh, my future child. And, and what did your child do again? February 1st. That's awesome, man. And you Thank are a you. great man. You really are, Brendan. You're a very, very impressive kid. You got a great heart. You're really bright. You got a terrific job, a beautiful wife, a child on the way. And, and he was proud of you, and so am I. So Thank you. Thank you for that. Mel? I honestly just want to say that, you know, when I was a kid and I would write anything, they would ask me who my hero was. My answer was always my dad. Uh -huh. Always, without question, it was my dad. And I just want to thank you for everything you've given us. Like, Everything he did was for us, and I know that, and it's going to be hard going forward without him, but I know he's here in spirit without a doubt. He's with us every single day. So, And I also want to say thank you so much to um, Mr. Katzmatidis and Mrs. Katzmatidis for having the memorial at St. Patrick's on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It was really, really such a beautiful day, and you know, all the people that came to support, like it just, it was so touching to me to see all of these people that my dad had such an impact on. It was very, very special. And thank you all for, for being there or live streaming. You're welcome. 
Uh, we will do this again very, very soon. You're going to Disney? Have fun. <laughs> That'll be fun. Thank you. I know that uh, you guys love that. I, I used to go to Disney all the time, and I do miss it. And just know that um, for the rest of your lives, me and Danielle are both uh, here for you guys. And uh, I know you know that, and so does Carol. Thank you for coming in today. We'll do it again very soon, and we'll start working on those plans to put those events together, Perfect. okay? We have a lot more to say, so we can we can yeah. definitely come back. <laughs> Listen, you're invited anytime. The studio is in there to your father. So yes. you're actually welcome here before I am. It's <laughs> that studio. <laughs> so the door is always open. And you guys were great. Thank you so much. Thank I love you, you both. You. Folks, that is Brendan McGurk and Melanie McGurk. And how could you not love those kids? Well, Buddy did a great job. And Carol. I know you're listening, Carol. That is that is the testament of a true man. Not how much money you've got. Not who's got the biggest house. Not who's got the nicest car. Not who's got the best job. Look at your kids. And, uh, man, Bernie did a terrific job. These are two beautiful kids. We'll come back and talk to Chris Matthews, Joe Pinion, and some more guests on this Dysproxia Radiothon. The 9 o'clock hour on Friday morning is coming right at you. Thanks again, Brendan and Melody. I'll be right back.